transfigured on the mount of Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to Be Transfigured. We pray that what you hear will inspire you to live a life in Christ and discover the Orthodox Christian Church. Visit our church's website at goflorence.org for more information about the Orthodox Church. Or join us in worship every Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Florence, South Carolina, where visitors are always welcome. Thank you. 
And he finishes again, he says, go and do likewise. The lawyer knew exactly what to do. But my brothers and sisters, there was something not quite right in this teacher-student relationship. Was it the teacher's fault? The teacher is Jesus Christ. He is the good teacher. He, as every qualified teacher did, would do, he was able to draw out the knowledge in the lawyer. Was the lawyer a good student? He knew the answers. But when it came time to living his life, that's where we're not quite sure what happens. Because the story ends here. So what we have, my brothers and sisters, is a relationship laid out in front of us of a good teacher and a loyal student. This is why the church wants us to look at this gospel. Because we have a teacher. Of course, our teacher is Jesus Christ. And who has the teacher left to teach in his absence? Not just any substitute, but he's left the church. He turns to the apostles and says, Go forth to all, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he says, teaching them to keep and maintain all that I've commanded you. So my brothers and sisters, the church is our teacher. The church has been given to us by God, as we just heard in the epistle, as a treasure. A divine treasure in an earthly vessel here. It's up to us now to be good students. It's up to us, my brothers and sisters, to have a better attitude than this lawyer. And this really happens more often than you might think. Some people will like to say, Father, what does the church have to say about dot, dot, dot? You really do just about anything. What does the church teach about fasting on Saturdays? We'll throw that one out there as an example. And then the church explains her teaching about fasting on Saturdays, which, by the way, Saturdays is not a fasting day of our church, except for Holy and Great Saturday, and very few other exceptions. The church teaches that you do not have to fast on Saturday in order to receive Holy Communion on Sundays. This is a teaching of the church. And so when we ask the church these questions, the good student, here's the answer, and then follow the obedience of Jesus Christ, do this and you will live. Go and do likewise. The church has been given to us not as something for us to debate, not as something for us to argue with, not as something for us really even just to memorize. The church has been given to us by brothers and sisters to lead us to heaven. To teach us everything that the Lord commanded. And the Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so we go again. What does the law say? The law says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So my brothers and sisters, the church is teaching us, Christ is teaching us, that the way to heaven is love. Now we've had this discussion before, not self-love, not, oh, I am so wonderful, oh, I deserve so many wonderful things. The law says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with your heart, with your soul, with your strength. And 
and your neighbor as yourself. And who was our neighbor? The Good Samaritan. How interesting that it's the Good Samaritan. <clears throat> Supposedly the enemy in the story, in the parable, the Good Samaritan is not supposed to like the Jew, is not supposed to have anything to do with the Jew, and yet is the Good Samaritan that stops and takes care of the man on the side of the road. Not the priest, not the Levite, but the Samaritan. Who is the good neighbor in Jesus Christ? You see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has come in our woundedness. Here we are laying on the side of the road, sometimes physically laying there, sometimes emotionally laying there, sometimes psychologically, whatever the case might be. Here we are laying on the side of the road needing help, needing healing, of whatever kind of healing it is. And we have many people that walk right by us. But Jesus Christ stops. Even those who hate him. That's pretty amazing. See, when Jesus Christ says, love your neighbor as yourself, and then he lays out the neighbor being the one who shows mercy, he's talking about himself. He wants us to see in each other the very image of God that we are all created in. He doesn't stop loving us just because we reject Him. That's the beauty of God's love. That's the kind of love that will get us to heaven. And so the church, the good teacher, my brothers and sisters, if I were to ask any one of you, what does it mean to be a good Christian? Every single one of us in this church could give the correct answer. Oh, we have to love, we should be in church, right? We go through the list. And yet, how many of us follow the second words of Christ? Go and do likewise. We know the answers, my brothers and sisters. Especially those of us who grew up in this great church, the Orthodox Church, which has been proclaiming the truth for 2,000 years. We know the right answer. It's just that sometimes, we don't do so well on the test. Remember, my mother was a teacher, so I always had an understanding of the difference between you knew something, but you had to find a way to get it onto the test. So the teacher knew that you knew it. You had to find a way to live the knowledge to prove that you really understood the information. And so, God is not going to wait for us until the very end to say, here, here's your final exam. Many of us, I suppose, are, are, are comforted in a way, thinking that we have until we die to get the test correct. And we do. But God is giving us the daily opportunity to practice and study. You know how many wonderful teachers give us those practice quizzes, right? Okay, open your papers, open your books, and they walk us through. The good teacher does this. Walks us through the information. Walks us through how to express what we already have inside. 
But ultimately, it's our responsibility, my brothers and sisters. It's our responsibility to live as God wants us to live. Love your neighbor as yourself, the Lord says. Not love yourself. And if you have any time left over, go take care of your neighbor. If we love God, we cannot pass down the side of the road and ignore someone laying there. It's not possible. I encourage you, if you find yourself and we have homeless people here in Florence. We have almost 2,000 homeless people in our small little city. So there are plenty of opportunities to pass somebody on the side of the road. And I encourage you, if you have in your heart when you walk past that person, Anything other than compassion, call me. Call me and say, Father, I know I'm supposed to love this guy, but I just can't get past the fact that he's lazy. I can't get past the fact that I came to this country with nothing and I worked hard. Why can't he work hard? Why do I have to give something to him? If that goes through your head, call me and we can walk through that together. The church has all the answers. We just have to be willing to listen. The gospel tells us it's not sufficient to know the right answer and not go and do likewise. So every now and then I give homework assignments, right? So our homework assignment this week, and as, as I said, it should not be very difficult here in Florence, you don't even have to go looking for someone in need. I want you, the church wants you, God wants you. As you're driving through town this week, if you come across someone who is in need of help, stop. Stop what you're doing and find out what that person needs. And help them. The example is clear. The people walk. I'm too busy to walk off on the side of the road. I gotta get to where I'm going. My brothers and sisters, this is our opportunity to show God exactly what we already know we have to do. So that's our homework for this week. You don't have to go hunting for anybody, you don't have to go searching for anybody, you don't have to go driving through the poor neighborhoods. But when you come across someone who needs help, it doesn't matter how late you are for an appointment. I'm going to ask you to stop this week. Stop and see what that person needs. Now, we have to be reasonable with this. I know, especially for those of you, the women, if you're alone in your car, I don't want you to get out of your car. I don't want you to put your own life in danger. But you can stop and you can find out what someone needs help with. And you can use your cell phone and you can get somebody help. You don't have to put your life in danger. I acknowledge that. There's some dangerous people out of our city. I, I get that. I'm not asking you to put your life in danger. But there's a difference between protecting yourself and your children and avoiding the situation altogether. That's our homework for this week. And I promise you, I promise you that that one little act this week, if you're 
truly open to God's love and His Spirit, it will have a very profound effect on your life this week. You will feel a sense in your heart that you may not even understand. That's God's love. Cleaning that valley we talked about last week. Be Transfigured is a production of the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina. Worship services are held in the church each week. Please visit our website at goflorence.org for more information.